Honorable colleagues, I want to welcome you to today's sitting. On Tuesday, 5th March 2024, an extensive report by the Committee on Information, Communication Technology and National Guidance swayed members of parliament into supporting increased funding to the Uganda Broadcasting Corporation, UBC. The committee established that Uganda Broadcasting Corporation suffered budget cut and unpredictable government funding where UBC budgets was reduced from Uganda ceilings 24.83 billion in financial year 2022-23 to 6.1 billion in financial year 2023-24. Inadequate funding to Uganda Broadcasting Corporation affects operation and expansion of radio and television network and goes against the directive principle number eight of state policy in, in the constitution of Uganda, which provides for provision of adequate resources among the organs and institutions of government for their effective functioning. UBC subvention, which includes salaries and wages to staff was equally affected by 80% reduction on funding to subventions. With this, the corporation may fail to pay staff salaries and other operational activities. The committee therefore recommends that one, government should always ensure that Uganda Broadcasting Corporation is adequately funded to enable it to execute its mandate as is guided by the broadcasting policy of 2006. Two, the Ministry of Finance, Planning and Economic Development should ensure that the presidential directive to annually provide Uganda Broadcasting Corporation with the selling, three, selling 30 billion from financial year 2024-2025 is implemented. I therefore would want to commend the chair, but also urge government to get out of the complacency I see we are in and allow UBC to be given resources that allows her to continue serving this nation ably. The issue mm. of funding, Mr. Speaker, is so critical. And anyone who determines how serious we are as a nation will have to look at our national voice and how supportive we are of it. UBC, the difference is that it is having many stations in order to perform this. And for many languages, for connectivity, which I would not find profitable if I'm a private player, for example, to have Butebo FM, to transmit in ATESO and ETC. But a, a UBC, under its mandate, under its act, we hold the duty of care to transfer information in languages understandable by people all over this country. Therefore, you might find it not profitable in the short run in form of money, but in the long run in form of awareness, it is quantifiable. We are appealing to Parliament that please invest more in UBC. You, if you want to demand for results, then give us money so that we can invest in UBC and then you demand for results. But otherwise, if we leave UBC as it is with those meager resources, we cannot produce the quality that you want. UBC is a subvention. And we did a general rationalization of 80% across board to all subventions, and this affected even areas which were critical like UBC. When we realized this, we passed a, sup a supplementary to them, which we've paid, and also in uh, this budget, you may initially see a reduction in their budget, but we have picked it and we shall address it through our college agenda. In the sitting, the Deputy Speaker, Thomas Taebwa, directed the Government Chief Whip to convene a multi-sectoral meeting involving relevant stakeholders to comprehensively discuss the nodding syndrome. The rehabilitation center that has been referred to in Omoro district, in Owaja, village, Malaba, Mr. Speaker has been closed since 2017 because of funding. It is true that the president made commitment and recommended that the Ministry of Health should take over these facilities and plan for it. In the last financial year, we raised this matter to the Ministry of Health. Nothing was done. Now we're in the planning process, Mr. Speaker, sir. I want to agree with your proposal that we have a meeting with these ministries and the Prime Minister. Some of these issues get into this forthcoming budget. The drug that we are using is uh, antipileptic. And I want to ask the minister whether we were told at one time that there was a research being done. How far has this research gone? And when will the government
come to address this issue. The households where these children come from need equally to be supported by lasting food items facilities. Some financial support. Iron seats need to be given to them. Construction materials such that the housing is also given to the families affected by the nodding syndrome. Ministry of Health wrote a letter to PSST requesting for funds. I think most of you people from northern Uganda are aware that the money that came through Ministry of Health was not really sufficient. It was a little money. Nonetheless, Ministry of Health at least provided treatment for these children, which is their core mandate. We shall also write to the president who promised to rehabilitation centers. But I think as Ministry of Health, gender actually advised that it's not nice to throw these children out of their homes to a rehabilitation center. It is a better way of dealing with them when they are in their own homes with their parents taking care of other needs of these children. I want also to commit that we shall have this multi-sectoral meeting with OPM, Ministry of Gender, and make sure whatever interventions we are doing in Northern Uganda are known to the members. Honorable colleagues, you will meet with the Prime Minister. What we are focusing on is action. Okay? Let us, I've talked to the Chief Whip, we are going to have this meeting where we shall focus on action. And it will be very important uh, to report back within one month. Should be, should be okay. The Finance Ministry revealed that it is undertaking consultations that will lead to amendment of the Public Finance Management Act 2015 to effectively cater for the budgeting process through the legislature. The committee notes that whereas PBB, which is a program-based framework, has been in force for four, year, four budget cycles, the concept is not support, supported by the current legal framework. Therefore, Amending the rules to align them with the, the public, the program best budgeting framework at this stage, when the Public Finance Management Act, the principal act governing the budget process, still refers to sector, is like putting the cart before the horse. It is therefore incumbent upon government to initiate appropriated appropriate amendments to the Public Finance Management Act that would inform the integration of PBB framework in the rules of procedure of Parliament. It is now about eight years ago since we enacted the Public Finance Management Act and so many things have evolved. At Ministry of Finance, we have decided to undertake the process of consultations which will lead to amendment of the Public Finance Management Act so that it is able to take care of the current circumstances. Honorable Minister, let me invoke my powers to give you one year. Yes. I can tell you, it's, it's a wrong process if, if you're for, for, he, for him to bring. Hmm? Yeah, but for the meantime, you can give us periodic updates? For the meantime, Mr. Speaker, the, the mismatch does not stop us from moving the way we are moving. During the sitting, the chairperson of the Uganda Women Parliamentary Association, Honorable Sarah Opendi, introduced a private member's bill seeking to regulate the assisted reproductive technology in Uganda. On the 21st of July 2022, this parliament granted me leave um, to move uh, this private member's bill. And right, Honorable Speaker, this is the Human Assisted Reproductive Technology Bill 2023. This is a bill intended to regulate the various fertility clinics that are operating and increasing in this country without any piece of legislation. So, right, Honorable Speaker, we have consulted widely all the stakeholders, and to our surprise, many African countries that actually even started these services 30 years ago do not have any legislation. So, right, Honorable Speaker, 
Uganda will be one of the few countries where other countries will benchmark if this bill is passed. So I beg to lay the Human Assisted Reproductive Technology Bill 2023. Thank you, Honorable Sarah. The bill uh, stands referred to the Committee on Harris to report back within 45 days as provided for under 129 of the rules of procedure. Honorable thank you, House Adjourned, sign die.